It's the Political Brown Kid back again. And I know you all are tired right now of hearing me talk about interracial dating, but I'm going to do it again because it's just a lot of thoughts. And I'm trying to just silo them into, you know, concentrated topics. So as you can see, I did one called Interracial Dating is Here to Stay. Unfortunately, I've done another one talking about the detriments of interracial dates. I've talked about a few topics like that. Um, and this one's kind of going to kind of piggyback off some of those same topics because I just kind of want to illustrate the how um, blacks are not ready to be in a position to interracially date. And I'm pretty sure I've already made that clear in some of my videos, especially my earlier videos. You all need to go and check those out because I'm not going to repeat myself in detail. Um, but let me just start off with giving you this example. And this just goes to show you come kind of from the male female dynamics. And this is just men in general, women in general. As you all know, you've been on the internet long enough. And if you're in my space, I'm pretty sure your algorithms led you here. And your algorithm has also shown you similar content. And that content has used those trigger words that I hate, like masculine, feminine, alpha, beta, zeta, and all this other terms and femininity and masculinity and all this other crazy stuff, right? So you already know from what most people talk about, and, and, and it's been proven, you know, a male's nature and a female's nature, right? And and I'm looking at this from a male's perspective, ladies, so please don't beat me up. You can look at this, um, you know, hopefully someone out there do a counter to do a female's perspective. But when you look at it, most females do say, I want a man who leads. I want to follow a man. I want a man who can lead and who's confident and who leads and um, provides and protects and, you know, he does all of these things. Well, when you look at the world and when you look at integration specifically, integration and how it destroyed the black community, and I continually say I'm going to talk about Martin Luther King and his um, errors, should I say, because he had a lot of them. He definitely had a lot of them. I'm not trying to say he did it on purpose. Maybe he did. I don't know. But we'll talk about it. When you look at integration, Integration occurred one way. See, when you think of integration, integration should, you would think that it would come from two ways. You would think that it would be one people on one side, one people on the other, and you would all meet in the middle at the demarcation point, right? In the neutral zone. And you would create a blend of something. That's integration. That's integrating my ideas and my stuff into your ideas and your stuff. We're going to throw out some of your stuff. You're going to throw out some of my stuff and we're just going to kind of blend. That would be integration, right? What you had when you talk about integration, there was no really integration. It was really just you all take our stuff because our stuff is better. That, that was their version of integration. They did not bust white kids into black neighborhoods. You didn't see kids in Chicago and you didn't see white kids get busted into the school zone of Cabrini Green. You didn't see that. You didn't see it. All of the black kids went to white schools because the, the, the buildings were newer, the paint was fresher, the seats were newer, they got the newer and better stuff. And they felt as though our stuff was inferior. So instead of the government coming in and fixing up our stuff and saying, okay, we're going to fix up these schools, we're going to make them look good, and we're going to bust these white people into these neighborhoods. They didn't do that. I told y'all before, everybody keeps talking about Black Wall Street in, in um, what, St. Louis, Missouri? I forget where it was in, in, um, in Missouri. I forget. But everybody keeps talking about that. You can even talk about Rosewood. But they were... Plenty of these um, Black Wall Streets in these um, communities throughout the United States. Washington, D.C. had an amusement park, a black amusement park. Um, it was right near where I think the Aquatic Gardens currently resides. Kind of if you're familiar with the D.C. area, um, off of 295. I think it sat over there. It was, I forget the name of it, but you all can Google it. It was a black amusement park that existed for black people because black people couldn't go to the regular amusement parks. And what happened when integration occurred? No one attended it because they wanted to go to the white stuff because now white people allowed you to spend your dollars and that's all you were to them was a resource to come there and spend your money 
And then you abandon your own stuff. You can say the same thing for black neighborhoods. Black neighborhoods went down because all black people think about is, I want to get out. They never think to say, I want to do better. If you ever notice that, notice that. You never see black people say, we need to do better and build up communities. It was always a theme of, let's get out. Even when you look at good times, when you look at like certain shows, it was just about getting out and moving on to something better. And that something better typically is a white neighborhood. And black people to this day, they'll do it. They'll abandon their neighborhood. The home prices go down. And then as soon as the home prices hit that, that sweet point, what do you see? A bunch of white people move in. Starbucks comes. Panera Bread comes. Smashburger comes. All of the nice little places that they dream and desire about, they come to that neighborhood. I don't make this up. You get your targets. When it's a black neighborhood, they don't think to put any of this stuff into your neighborhood. They'll give you a dag on. They'll give you the, the cheapest grocery stores. They'll give you the cheapest stores, period. And then as soon as the whites start moving in, then they start upgrading all of the buildings and stuff. Then the home prices go up. And all, what happened? All of the black people moved out to the suburbs to be hang around because black people love to hang around white people. We love to say, where y'all going? You're not going to leave me behind. And we start looking for white people. And you abandon your stuff. White people come in, buy it at a discount, and the home prices go through the roof. The neighborhoods go through the roof. And then you want to come back. And then you realize how great you had it in the city. You had Metro. You had Bustler. Like, look, you look, look. At, I'm telling y'all, you look at Washington, D.C. I'm telling you, Washington, D.C. is an example. You can look at New York. You can look at all of the major cities. As soon as these white people start moving in, the stores change. The retail change. Bike lanes go in. These white people have now procured or secured your metro. So now they're, they're, your metro that you used to ride or you used to hate riding, they love riding. They've abandoned their cars. They're like, good, I get to live in the city. It's walkable. I get to ride bikes. I get to use a bike share. I get to use scooter share. And I have all of these resources and parks and all of this beautiful stuff. And you trap out in the suburbs. And I mean, you know, I'm not trying to say that you don't love it in the suburbs, but everything, all the nightlight and everything's happening in the city. And then you're like, man, yeah, I used to live here. And then you then you kind of get mad because then you see people living in your neighborhood that used to be your neighborhood that you left and that they're now occupied. I'm digressing a little bit, but I just kind of want to show you all how this integration thing happened. Integration just didn't it didn't benefit black people at all. You lost the whole Negro um, baseball league. Jackie Robinson, greatest player of all, said, I can't play with you Negroes. I'm getting out of here. Y'all too dark for me. I'm going to play with the white man. And he left. And everybody gets happy when a black person abandons shit and goes ahead and quote unquote secures a bag. I hate that term. Y'all keep saying that term. Like money is, there's a lot more things important than your securing a bag. And that is having self-pride in your own people. I'm bringing all this up to say this, to show you that integration works one way. As long as white people say that they can dictate the terms and control the terms of the integration agreement, which they always do because they make the laws, they enforce the laws, they control the government, they control the, which controls the laws, they control the military or the police power because they control the police, they control the military, and they control the media. I told y'all you have to control those three things. And black people control none of them. None of them. You got Gail King. She's a part of the media talking about Caitlin Clark, disrespecting Don Staley, probably one of the greatest basketball point guards, male or female. She, she was my, she's the only reason why I watched um, women's basketball when I was young. See Don Staley run around with that little asymmetric haircut. Playing basketball, and she was really the only female that I watched, and I and she's the only female I follow to this day because she coached South Carolina. I couldn't tell you anything about women's basketball, but as soon as you mentioned the gang cops or Don Staley, I could tell you a little something. But instead, Gail King feels the need to disrespect her by bringing up Caitlin Carr. But I digress. But Gail is a part of the media. I'm bringing this up. Oprah's a part of the media, and what little media power they have, they use it to 
bring black people down. I can't make this stuff up. And so I'm bringing this up again to say this. The, the nature of women, because I kind of started off with that, so I want to bring it back and get back on track because I can be scatterbrained. But the nature of women is to follow a provider, a protector, somebody that can do something for them. When women see that somebody has something going on, that's what they're going to follow. And so when you look at the men in America, and so, and of course, too, let me just say this. A lot of times, the, the reason why I say the media is so important, and you all should already know this. I'm not, I'm not, I know I'm not talking to people that aren't intelligent, so I'm not trying to play on y'all's intelligence. But for people who may not see the big picture, the media paints a picture. And a lot of times what you see on television is not the way the real world is, but because you see it so much, you believe it. So once again, prime example, a lot of black women used to see a lot of black men with white women. That's because they were NBA players or, or you know, famous people on television. And But the majority of black men marry black women. But because that's what you see on television, that's what they fixate on. And the media knows this to be true. That's why they're pushing to you black women being with white men, because now they're convincing black women that they need to be fall under black white men's leadership and fall with white men. And at the same time, they're convincing you that your child that y'all make is not going to be white, but it's going to be this super baby, this baby that's not black, not white. It possesses the powers of both black and white people, and it's going to unite the world. That's why I call them super babies. So in saying that, when you start seeing white people dictate the terms, because once again, white people are saying, we're going to run and own and control the Fortune 500 companies. We're going to run, and own and control the media. We're going to run and own and control all of the movies that are produced. So they're the ones giving white black women a shot. If you notice, when you watch television, it's the black woman with a white man. And then the black man is some. He's some androgynous. He's either gay or he's doesn't have a he's he's castrated like um Grey Worm in Game of Thrones, or he's crippled, he's in a wheelchair, he has some type of deficiency. He either has a missing limb, he has no penis, he's gay, or he's just not into women, he's just the comic relief of the movie. So when black women say see that the white man is giving me a shot, that's why they're gravitating towards white men because it's the white men that are the providers. They provide the jobs. They provide the promotions. They're the gatekeepers to everything. So you as a black man, you look once again like you did in the 1970s, like you did in the 60s and 50s. You just are just a helpless worker. You're not a boss. And in this day and age, all women want are boss dudes. That's what they want. That's what they want. That's that's why when you see on their dating profile, all of them are CEO of a company that only has them as an employee. They are CEO of themselves. Every chick's a boss chick. I have a they all breeding French bulldogs. They all have some kind of hustle. They never mention that they're just a secretary on their main job, the job that pays them. They're all doing something else, but they want to seem like a boss and they want to tie themselves to bosses. So they don't want to be with a black man because they view him as being at the bottom. And this is not just happening here in America is what I'm trying to hit the home to. I know it took me 13 minutes to say this, but when you go jump to the motherland, let's jump to the continent of Africa. Those you hear more and more stories about black women in Africa, African women with Asian men. Because now age, because now China has gone over to the continent and they've embedded themselves into Africa. And like I told you, the African governments, they're so pathetic. They're so stupid. They're so needy and got their hands out because they can't get their stuff together. They just accept resources and allow other people to come in and bang their women. And now I told you all about in our previous video, they said that there's a grocery store in, in Nigeria where only Asians can shop at. The Asians have put a guard there and said only Asians can enter in here. And no Africans, no, no Nigerians or Africans can shop in there. Only Asians. I don't make this up. And I'm not trying to say it's true. This is just a video that I saw on X. But hey, do the research for yourself. But what I'm trying to say to you is this. 
African women are seeing it too. They're like, okay, the, the Asian men are the gatekeepers. They're the professionals. They're the smart ones. They're the they're the providers. And thus being the provider, I can. Ha- they're going to give me the resources. They're doing the same thing with white men. I just did a video on the white guy who tried to um, Lucas Richards tried to off tried to eliminate his um, second black the, the black wife. He had a white wife over in America. Married another wife in, in um, was it Ghana? And because she got pregnant and he didn't want her to have the baby, he allegedly tried to off her by, you know, um, you know, cuttings and injections to terminate, you know, pregnancies. I'm trying to clean this up as best as possible. But once again, it's like these men are viewed as being the breadwinners. And this is why also, too, when I basically made my statement before, um, and this is what was in a way earlier video, is that the only way Africa is going to get on track, and that's the only way black people, period, even in America, is for you to discriminate against white people. You can't fight fair once somebody has fought dirty for 400 years. And now all of a sudden they're trying to say, okay, everybody has to play fair. You're looking at a continent of Africa, Africa. A continent that has hundreds of African countries on it, right? Black countries from Egypt all the way down to Somalia, all the way down to Nigeria. Go, I don't know, and Liberia and Ethiopia and all these other countries right on there. In um, Uganda, um, I think I, I'm not going to name them. I can't name them, name them all. I'm only naming the popular ones. Namibia. But... When you look at how many Africans are on the African continent, there's about 2 billion Africans on the continent. And 1% of the richest richest people are less than make up 1% of the population. They're all the white people. All of the South Africans, all of the white people that live in Africa, on the continent of Africa, they have their own, they have all of the resources because they inherited it from colonial from colonization and from the colonial days. And that power has never been shifted. No one has ever said, we're going to nationalize all of the stuff that you all took from us, all of the businesses, and we're giving it back to the people. They're not trying to correct those wrongs because then they're going to get hit with tariffs and um, uproars from other countries and from the United Nations. So they can't do it. They refuse to do it. But at some point in time, you're going to have to discriminate against those whites and give power to your people. But now all it looks as though is being is that the black men, whether you're in Africa or whether you're in America, all you are are degenerates and you provide no leadership and you provide zero provision. And to make it even worse is that they're giving your women more power than you. And you already know that women want someone who is on their level or higher. So all this doing is forcing them to say is, I can't be with this guy anymore. He does nothing for me. The only thing I need is a white guy or an Asian guy. So that's one reason. The second reason ties into that. When you look at, like I told you before, you look at the continent of Africa now. There's more and more black African women marrying white men. And even, I guess, you know, you can look at maybe there's some African men getting white women. These people have an agenda. By you marrying an African, now you have access to the land. You have access to ownership of the land over in Africa. And not only that, just being accepted into the community. Because once again, like I did the video on on mixed kids and interracial dating, people aren't going to go against their family. So if if an African woman or an African man sees that their child or their family member is in love with somebody that's um, that's non-black, they're going to accept that because, <coughs> excuse me, but they're going to accept that because to not accept it means that they're not accepting their child or their loved one. So they're going to go along with it. And so in going along and accepting that person, then you give that person access to all of the resources of Africa. And now they get embedded into Africa. It's amazing that how once you start getting white people included into your stuff, 
Now, all of a sudden, they want to start doing stuff that benefits them. Like I told y'all, they didn't do. Well, listen, I've seen it in New York. I've seen it in D.C. They didn't have any big plans for Harlem back in the 80s or 90s or even probably the early 2000s. They didn't have any plans for D.C. in the 80s or 90s. It wasn't until the late 90s when white people started moving into the city that then it's then it started saying, OK, well, let's start giving businesses and all of these businesses now wanted to come to D.C. Now all of this development wanted to come to D.C. Now you want to put in some nice fancy stores when all along you had nice middle class neighborhoods and nice middle class families in the district. I don't make this up. I've lived it. I don't need a history book to tell me this. I lived through it. I see it now. I see you, you see it now in today's climate. When you look at today's climate with the interest rates being high as they are and with the housing market struggling, a lot of whites are like, I cannot live here. And they're abandoning like rich areas over in Virginia and abandoning rich areas over in even in some in some places in D.C. And they're abandoning rich places in some um, counties, the northern counties of Maryland. And they're coming to the black areas because the black areas are more affordable. And they're moving in. And then as soon as they come in, then all of a sudden Starbucks is like, oh, you're, this area is now prime for Starbucks. I see it in Harlem. Harlem didn't have any development back in the day. And now they got development. Now it looks like they're about to lose some um, due to the crime. But that's the way that they do you. But I'm getting back on track here is that you're giving whites access to your resources, to your family resources. And a lot of these black athletes, these black male athletes, they go ahead and sign million dollar contracts and just to give it to some white woman who doesn't need it, who doesn't even deserve it. You could have married you a sister. You could have you could have married you a sister. You could have taken time to get to know a sister. Now for some of us men, maybe those men had the same troubles that we had. Maybe those women on your campus didn't know you was a big NFL player. Because we know how some black women can be. Some black women, they're not, they're not as, they don't pursue like white women will pursue. White women are just different. They're going to pursue you. And, and I'm not taking this as a disrespect to black women, but honestly, there is a difference at times. But I'm going to say this at the same token, because when I was on campus and I'm not even that handsome of a man, I had a few sisters pursue me they they threw it out there and you know they you know the choosing sign was it was more overt so i can't say that these black men that are, that are basketball players and you know popular jocks on the college campus aren't you know the, the black women aren't shooting their shots maybe they are maybe they're not but at the same time you being a big time celebrity you should be able to put your net out there you should have a black woman on your arm. You should be sharing your resources with her. If anybody you're going to make rich and give a lottery ticket to, it should be her. It shouldn't be Becky. But we continually do this. Claude Anderson speaks on it all the time, people. Claude Anderson is probably one of my most favorite people. I was going to write several books until I fell across Claude Anderson one time. And I said, he's saying everything. It was, it was almost like we, had, we shared the same brain. Everything he said, I said the same thing to in totally different conversations. But you're giving your resources away and they're doing it in Africa right now. They're giving it to Asians and they're giving it to whites and they're doing it here. And then and then to make matters worse, then they want to tell you that your offspring aren't black. They once again, white people get to dictate the world to everyone else. They'll tell you your kid's not black, your kid's mixed. Just claim them. They're, we're, we're adding new boxes to our forms and just tell your kid that they should claim themselves to be mixed because they don't want to hurt their white parents, fam, their white parents' feelings. This happens all the time. It happens. And then once these once these people divorce you, as you can see, Holly Berry paying child support, paying alimony. Um, it's another black female. I just saw her. She paying alimony to a man. You don't see men asking for alimony. Bob, you don't see men asking for alimony from these women. Not brothers. Brothers ain't doing it. They just, if, if it's over, it's over. But the white men, they like, we're going to get you and we're going to take your resources. And they're doing it. 
or they often y'all. You know, you know they they devious like that. They will off you. They often y'all. So this is why I say that you know interracial dating. You know these are the downsides to it. These are the downsides to interracial commingling. And all it does, once again, like I told you, is it affects black people because the black race is the one that's being wiped out. Because once again, they're reclassifying all of the light-skinned people as black. And light-skinned, and not just light-skinned, but black people, period, want an excuse to be not black. I hear it so much. Like I told you, I have friends. I have this one female friend. She loves to talk about how she got an Indian in her family. And she like, yeah, because, you know, I'm, well, I'm not necessarily black. I'm I'm part Cherokee and I'm part. And I'm just, and you know, I just kind of, I don't even say anything because it's just kind of like, I, I just don't want to always seem like I'm militant 24 hours a day. It, it just disgusts me. I see so many black females on the date nap. And again, I don't know what white men, are, I mean, what black men are doing, women, I'm not checking for them. So all I can report is what I'm coming across from. On females, I just see them so much. I'm mixed. I'm mixed. Or they'll say, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. Um, 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 you, they got nine and ten nationalities listed down. And I'm looking at a whole black woman. I'm looking and I'm like, where? I've seen people, you know, I, you know, it's just, this is what I see. People just assume just because they're light skin or just because they have some fine grade of hair that there are. You know, that, oh, yeah, because I got so-and-so, you know, I'm not necessarily black. They love an ex Black people love an excuse to try to say how deluded, how not really black they are. They love doing that. They love doing it. Or we love pitting each other against each other. Like, I watched this movie called The Blackening. It's actually a pretty funny movie. It's on, they show it on cable a lot. It's a movie called The Blackening. If you ever get a chance, watch it. They have the one light-skinned girl on there, and they look, the repeating running joke in this whole show, in this whole movie, should I say, it's her black side and her white side. But that's your white daddy talking. Well, you know, that's your white side coming out in you, girl. We always like to look at a light-skinned person and just automatically dilute their blackness. I don't know why we do that. They're just as black as us. And we should be just as welcoming of black people. Just like I get tired of hearing people on, um, I've watched this balloon pop show and black people talking about, uh, I've seen the, the black females do it really. And I'm pointing fingers black female, but I'm just, I'm just pointing out the observation of what I see on the balloon pop show. You'll see the black female say he's not dark enough. And that's cool that I guess, you know, women want to be with a black man, that the sisters, I, I get that. But also at the same time, I don't think that we should be playing the color game within our own people. Light-skinned person is just as good as, you know, a light-skinned black is just as black as a, a dark-skinned black. And we shouldn't be doing this to our own people. I'm just being honest with you. You always hear people say, well, you know, they're not really black. If you don't have two black parents, then you're not really black. Stop with all that stuff. And this is why our race can't get along, because we create turmoil within with one another. So this has just been my little rant. I know I, I never write this stuff down. I just kind of freestyle. But um, maybe I should become provide more coherent thoughts. But I just kind of wanted to do a brain dump on this topic. But if you have any thoughts, just drop them in the comment section. And also hit the like and subscribe button. Once again, this is a Political Brown Kid. Take care.